Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Windows 7 Superlight, which was actually released quite a while ago. The ISO I downloaded was from 2019, I believe, however, I have no clue how old Superlight actually is. The reason that we're taking a look at this is because historically on this channel, you guys like looking at lightweight versions of Windows operating systems, or even custom Windows operating systems, so that's why we're taking a look at this one here. I also, thought, I also thought it would be a nice little throwback to go take a look at Windows 7. So of course, uh, I already did this video before, however the file got corrupted, so we're going to have to start over. Um, this VM already has an install of Windows 7 Superlight on it, but we're going to go ahead and do another clean install so we can go through that clean experience, the install experience of Windows 7 Superlight, and I really want to show you how quick this installs. The ISO itself, I believe, was like 768 megabytes. It was a very lightweight ISO. I'm really interested to see what they cut out of this version. In my opinion, Windows 7 was one of the best Windows versions just because it didn't have all the crap that Windows comes with now. There's no Microsoft account requirements. There's no, like, linking with OneDrive. I mean, this was, like, the last, I would say, standalone, in quotes, Windows operating system before we got mixed with the Microsoft account stuff. Alright, so here we are. We're just going to delete the partitions on this drive because I already had a version installed, and then click Next. Notice how it skipped the first part of the installer, which was that Next setup is starting. It just went straight into the Partitions Manager. And just take a look at how quick this is installing. We're going up like 5%, around 5%, literally less than every second. This is insane. So, because it is so lightweight, it installs in very minimal time. So the one thing I'm noticing here right out the bat, um, it skipped the OOB experience, um, but this is Windows 7 Starter. We have this strange arrow box um, appearing on this screen, and we have an option for the on-screen keyboard, which we can't access uh, because uh, keyboard shortcuts aren't going to work to get up there, and I can't get the mouse up there. So it is just taking its good old time to log in here, which is okay. Um, but th those are just two things I noticed straight out of the bat. But I do like that background. Alright, so here we are in the RT7 Lite post install wizard. Uh, I guess we're going to install 7 Lite. I don't know what this does. Um, okay. And that was it. So the first thing I want to see is if VMware tools will install. Um, I think this is a 32-bit OS. Uh, I should probably double check that actually. Um, so if I go to properties, yep, 32-bit. So I'm gonna need the 32-bit installer and the runtime DLL. Okay, so that's not gonna work. So my next thing is we're gonna change the screen resolution to probably that, and it'll stretch. So it's gonna be a little laggy. Um, because there's no graphics drivers, but it's better than having those black bars on the side. So let's take a look here at what we actually have. Here we have our desktop, the standard blue background. It looks a lot like Windows 9X, uh, just because it has the classic theme already enabled. Here we have our recycle bin, which is obviously empty. Two desktop.ini files, which if you look, those are actually all throughout the OS. Uh, I can't remember what they do specifically. I, I honestly can't remember. I watched a video on it one time. Um, Moving down here, we have the Windows 7 watermark build information. Uh, we have our time, we have our sound, which, by the way, there are no sounds in this OS. We'll talk about that a little later. Our network situation, which our network adapter is plugged in, I believe, yes, network adapter is in. So I'm not sure why we're not getting an internet connection, probably because there's no drivers. But then we also have our USB thing, whatever you want to call this. Then we have the on-screen, not on-screen keyboard, this is the keyboard layout button. Um, okay, can I make this go away now? I guess that might just stay up there for now. I don't know how to get rid of it. I, I should not have put that up there, but I guess it's going to stay up there now. Okay, works for me, I guess. So taking a look at the pre-installed apps, uh, it did make an account called admin uh, at first, so that is the default name. Moving down the list, uh, we have accessories, which default accessories. I think all this came with Tiny10 as well. Uh, standard administrative tools, maintenance, and startup are both empty. So pretty bare bones OS, which we did expect. Um, not a lot of stuff, not even an internet browser. Um, if I see iExplore, 
is that the command? I I don't know if that's a command. I don't remember. So in terms of storage, we are at 55.9 of 59.8. So we're using roughly four gigs, give or take, um, which isn't that bad actually. That's about on par with what I can't remember what Tiny Ten uses. It's been such a long time, um, but that's not bad actually for a Windows 7 install. Um, taking a look in C, because I did know that there was some weird stuff like autoexec.bat. I can't remember if that's a Windows 7 thing. I don't think it is by default. Um, I think that was something added, although it could be wrong. Uh, more sys files, which I think those are Windows 7 files. Um, just taking a look at Winver here, we can see Windows 7 starter, build 7601, blah, 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 blah. All that fun stuff so just seeing what general build of Windows this is and whoa we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, I want to look at task manager take a look at the RAM usage we are at 294 megs of RAM being used right now and we have a gig in this system so we're at 294 which is not that bad honestly 293 so we're idling right there which is uh, 301 302 so we're idling around 300 roughly that's what we were doing the last time I tried to uh, record this video and what was that menu that we just saw? Oh, wow. So when you right click on the desktop, you get a whole bunch of options, including your default ones up here. But then you also have like administrative tools, appearance, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, assuming these are like settings, task scheduler. Yep, those are settings. Then we have new, a new folder, shortcut, image, blah, 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 blah. We also have screen resolution and God mode, which, yeah, this does exactly what I thought it would do. It brings up a whole bunch of I don't want to say secret, but kind of like secret settings. Uh, look, I can take the clock away, take the volume away, power and action center. Those are disabled, but I mean, and so with that being said, that's all I really have for Tiny 10 or Tiny, not Tiny, Windows 7 Super Light. Um, pretty good operating system in general. I like it a lot. Um, I really feel like if Windows 7 was still a thing, I would totally... I would one want to get arrow on this, um, which I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that's an option. I would try to get arrow on this because I really do like arrow, and then I would use this because it is a very lightweight, very debloated operating system, and I feel like it had it would it, it would be beneficial. So that being said, if you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.